Okay. We're going to be solving quadratic equations by factory. Okay? Solving a quadratic equation by factory, essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to isolate the variable x. And many of these questions, if we were just to expand this, our x variable becomes very large, and there's usually more than one. Okay? We need to isolate them in order to figure out what their values could possibly be. So right now we have a question written out algebraically. Okay? It's very different from what we're used to looking at. We're going to expand and simplify it. Then I'm going to show you exactly what we're trying to do. So this question here uh, says 2 times bracket x plus 3 squared is equal to 5 bracket x plus 3. Okay. What we want to do is we want to set this equation equal to 0. The reason we want to set it equal to 0 is because we know that if, there are, if we were to factor something, uh, if we were to factor something and set it equal to 0, we're able to find factors to 0. If I were to set it equal to a number like 15, let's say. Okay, so let's say I rearrange this, bring it all over, and it's equal to 15. Well, there is an infinite amount of solutions to what could multiply 15. You could have 1, 15, 3, 5. Then we have decimal numbers, fractions. But if we have the number 0, the only numbers that multiply 0 are 0 and something else. And that's the whole reason we set things equal to zero, is because there's really only one solution or the opposite solution, depending on which term we're setting equal to zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand the left side, then I'm going to bring the right side to the other side of the equation. Okay. So let's expand this and try to make it just one quadratic equation. So this will read 2x plus 3 times x plus 3 is equal to, and we might as well distribute this in the process, 5x plus 15. Okay? We know we're going to have to use FOIL, rainbow method, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to show you another way to do this, because I know we haven't done many versions of this, but I'm actually going to bring the 2 in first, and then use FOIL. Okay? So that will give us 2x plus 6 times x plus 3, okay? So this would be the way you would do it if you were to bring the common factor in first. And we still have 5x plus 15. We then go about uh, first terms, 2x times x gives us 2x squared. 2x times 3 gives us 6x. 6 times x gives us 6x. And 6 times 3 gives us 18. It's still equal to 5x plus 15. We're going to collect our like terms, so we're left with 2x squared plus 12x plus 18. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the 5x and the 15x, sorry, the 15, to the other side of the equation. So this becomes subtract, yeah, negative 5x and minus 15, or negative 15, is equal to 0. Remember, our goal was to set the equation equal to 0 so that we can factor and solve. So, I collect like terms again. 12x and 5x will be like terms in 18 and 15. This will leave us with 2x squared. 12x minus 5 will give us positive 7x. And 18 minus 15, positive 3. Okay? Is equal to 0. We've set this equal to 0 so that essentially, because we know this is a quadratic, it's going to make some parabola. Uh, the a term is positive. We're looking for the x-intercepts, okay? We're always going to set questions equal to zero so we can find our x-intercepts. The x-intercepts are the possible values of x, Jeremiah. So you always want to expand the left side, or is okay. Well, you'll want to do, if this is a more intricate question, you'll always want to expand it, try to make it just one triangle fill. If you notice at the beginning, we had two sides to solve. We want to move everything over to one side, and then simplify as far as possible before we get back if you don't distribute it properly, foiled first, that's fine. And then distribute the two after, no problem. Okay? So, what we're going to do now is we're going to factor this. Because if you notice, I have two values of x. So, what we learned in grade 9 was substitution elimination. We went over to little in grade 10. We can't solve this this way because we only have one equation and I have two separate uh, variables for x. 
If I only had one x, okay, let's say we had the x squared, well, then I can move these terms to the other side of the equation. I'd left with 2x squared equals some number, and I would just isolate the x, okay? Very simple. But the reason we're factoring is because I have an x squared and an x, which means it's not easy to separate the x, to isolate it by itself, okay? So we're going to do this by factoring. We're going to take the factors of the first term. Uh, we know they're going to be 2x and 1. Factors of the last term are 3 and 1. We know their products need to add up to 7x. So when we multiply, it looks like it's going to be 2x times 3, which will give us 6x, and 1x times 1, which will give us 1x. So those both work. So in our factored form, we're going to have 2x and x is equal to 0. Where do I put the 3? Which bracket? Oh, just the x. The one with just the x. And why do I do that? Because we multiplied it by the 2. So because we multiplied it in 2, it has to go in the opposite bracket of the 2. So the 3 goes in the other bracket. And then vice versa, the 1, because we had to multiply it by 1, goes in the other bracket. So now we have our factored form. This is where I was talking about, because this value is 0, we know that this term multiplied by this term is equal to 0 which means one of these must be zero because we can't multiply by any other numbers and end up with an answer of zero. One must be zero. We don't know which one, so we're going to solve for both possibilities. The possibility that this one was zero or that this one is zero. If this term was something else like 16, there's infinite amount of solutions we could get here. So that's why we're always setting this equal to zero. So we're going to split this equation. We're going to be left with 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. So in other words, if this bracket ended up being 0. Or x plus 3 equals 0. In other words, if this bracket was 0. Okay? When we solve those, this will become 2x is equal to negative 1, which is x is equal to negative 1 half. And in the other example, x will be equal to negative 3 when we bring it over. So, the possible answers to this question... Okay, and we can check these if we want. Are negative a half and negative three. So, we'll jump up to the beginning here. One over two, a half, because we had brought the one over and then we had to divide by two. Okay, at the bottom. So, see how this was two x equals negative one? To bring the two over, we have to divide both sides by two. No, because this one's a one. Okay? So the possible answers are negative a half and negative three. So, like we said, we're going to write these up here. X is either negative a half or negative three. I'm going to quickly go about solving these. So if you guys notice, if this, if X is negative three here, what are we going to get? When I plug it into this bracket. I plug negative three in for X, what will I get? Oh, uh, what is it, Christian? Zero. Zero. Negative three plus three is zero. What's zero times five? Zero. Okay, so the right side would be equal to zero. And if I plug negative three in here, zero. Would the left side equal the right side? Okay, so we knew that one worked. The harder example to solve would be the negative a half. If I plug negative a half into here, I want, to try, I want you guys to try to do this math mentally. Negative a half plus three is what? Two and a half. So 2.5, 2.5 times five. Seven. Pretty sure it's 12.5. Someone check on their calculator for me. It is 12.5. Is it? Two and a half. Yes, perfect. All right, let's do the exact same thing over here. We plug in negative half, that gives us 2.5, 2.5 squared times 2, okay? So, anybody want to put that in a calculator for me? 2.5 squared and then multiplied by 2? I'm thinking it's 6.25 and then times 2 is 12.5, is that right? Okay, so what I solved there, I know we did most of it as mental math, 
is that we proved that plugging these in, both sides of the equation were equal. Okay? So your answer is if you plug them in, the left side of the equation should equal the right side of the equation in the end. So that would be a way to check these to see that you got the right answer by factoring. Okay?